Hey there, I'm Celia, a French freelance illustrator and full-time designer. Welcome in this new video! Today I'm giving you 5 tips to start the Linoca printmaking technique. So if you never heard about the lino cut or lino printing, it's a technique where you are cutting into a lino plate, it feels a bit like a giant eraser, and then you are applying some ink to use it as a stamp. There is a lot of different ways to do it, but today I'll give you my tips to start. So first, start with a simple design. There is a lot to learn when you are starting to do some lino cuts, and even if you want to draw or cut something with a lot of details, don't hesitate to start with something really simple. At the beginning, you will probably test some inks and material like linoleum, and not all materials are working well. So if you spend six hours carving a design and at the end you don't like the lino because of its rendering or its texture, it will be really frustrating. So start with a small and simple design and then make some more complex ones. Two, don't be fooled by the beginner kits. Some beginner kits are really great, but some are really a waste of money and the quality is catastrophic. Instead of buying an entire beginner set, learn more about the quality brands and buy less material. For example, instead of buying an entire set of SD inks that are really bad, choose one color from Schminke. You just need one color to try the technique. 3. Be careful with the stamp specificities. The lino print technique works like a stamp, so there is a mirror effect and you have to think and design something flipped, otherwise your design won't have the correct orientation. If you are working with some tracing people like me, you can trace your design and when you transfer it on the lino, it will flip it. So when you will print it, it will flip it again and you will have the correct design. The specificity of the stamp is also how to obtain the white and the inked part. Everything carved is going to be the color of the paper and everything not carved is going to get the ink and get printed on the paper. It looks a bit complicated at first to design it, but it will be easier after a few times. 4. Get the correct amount of ink on your stamp to make a great print. Too much ink on your stamp will create some blurry lines due to the excess of ink and it can create some weird textures and even fill some curved lines. So when you are inking your roller, you should have a correct amount of wet ink but you want it to be smooth and not making tiny waves of ink. It's the same when you are inking your stamp. If there is some tiny ink waves, there is probably too much ink. Sometimes you will be tempted to add more ink because your print will look a bit pale, but in this case, it's probably a pressure problem. Which leads us to the fifth tip. Apply the correct pressure on your stamp to have a clean print. There is several techniques to reach the good pressure. You can use a heavy book to apply a uniform pressure. You can also use the back of a spoon and press your paper by making little circular movements. You can also use a press, but at the beginning you probably won't invest in one. The spoon technique is working really well, um, just try to not move the paper when you are doing it, otherwise your design will look fuzzy. And a bonus tip for today, send your stamps. It will help it to better keep the ink and avoid some weird result due to the smooth surface. You just need to sand lightly your stamp without removing too much material, but just to break the smooth surface. And that's it for today. I hope you will have a lot of fun doing some lino print. Don't hesitate if you have some question. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye!